I just have a, a request, two requests actually. First of all, that meetings or events or projects or time that you're going to be scheduled in the church here, if you can, the department heads, um, or committee chairs, put them on the big calendar here. One of the things that we want to do in the newsletter is to create an event calendar for the month. So if we have everything for the month of February or everything that's on here, that will go in the newsletter so everyone has an idea. Second of all, every time I put out the birthdays and anniversaries, someone calls me up and says, oh, you missed my anniversary because I didn't know. So if you have birthdays and anniversaries and you're not sure if you're on our list, please give Lori in the office a call. Leave a message, however you need to do it, just so that we can be help you be part of our caring ministries um, and we can share that with um, the community or with our church community thank you yeah I, I will just say there is a lot of really important information that uh, that is in the newsletters and Wendy and the communications team does a great job with that so I just encourage everyone when they come out uh, I wouldn't even just read it and throw away. Sometimes there's ongoing things that are in there as well. So, all right. Any other announcements this morning? All right. I'd like to thank everyone for the recycling that's being done in the fellowship in the church, especially the fellowship. It's working. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Thank you for all those that are helping now. Let's begin our service today. <laughs> worship is from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections meditating in his temple, for he will conceal me there when troubles come. He will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock, and then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. At his sanctuary I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy, singing and praising the Lord with music. Hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me, and my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Do not turn your back on me. Do not reject your servant in anger. You have always been my helper. Don't leave me now. Don't abandon me, O God of my salvation. 
And let's enter into a time of worship today. Stand with me. So you will see that even though uh, we did this song last week, we want to make sure that we are becoming more familiar with this first song and in the insert before the throne of God above. Before the throne of God above. And the second one is actually one of my all-time favorite hymns, and it's actually sung kind of the world over, so I'm wondering how many people will recognize this one in Christ alone. But we will jump in. Here we go. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong and perfect need A great high priest whose name is love Whoever lives and pleads for me My name is graven on his hands My name is written on his heart I know that while in heaven he stands no tongue can bid me thence depart. No tongue can bid me thence depart. When Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within, upward I look and see him there, who made an end to all my sin. Because the same they saved your time, my sinful soul is held in free. What God the justice satisfied to look on him and pardon me, to look on him and pardon me. Behold him there, the risen Lamb. My perfect spotless righteousness, the great unchangeable I am, the King of glory and of grace. One with itself I cannot die, my soul is purchased with his blood, my life is saved with Christ on high. be new, but like I said, it is one of the most popular hymns around the world today. So if you don't know it, then just listen to the words and uh, hopefully you'll, you'll still be able to join worship with us. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my life, my strength, my song, this cornerstone, this solid crown, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of God, what depths of peace, when fears are filled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ I stand. Here we go. In Christ alone, who took our pledge, fullness of God in helpless faith, this gift of love and righteousness, Torn by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied, for every sin on him was laid, here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground, his body lay, 
So we've talked about the candle lighting. We've talked about uh, what else have we talked about? Oh, we've talked about the Apostles' Creed, uh, different things. So that way we know why we're doing certain things. So I just wanted to say that I have now undertaken the task of of singing each of our newer songs and posting them on YouTube. So if you'd like to hear them beforehand, they will now be posted a few days before we actually uh, sing them on a Sunday. So you could just go to our regular church YouTube account if you want to actually hear. Um, it's not with Lorene, but, but I just... Well, actually, it is in both places now. Oh, okay. So if you go directly to YouTube, if you just search for Community go. Church, subscribe to that, and then yeah. it'll be right on the page. But it is on the church website, oh, too, great. right where the Thank scriptures you. are. Yeah. So the goal of this is to just give people a very easy way to hear contemporary songs, although I did in Christ Alone as well, because that is a, a more modern hymn. Um, although, it, like I said, I have sung that literally on several continents. So, um, so we are choosing a contemporary song and a very popular hymn so that we can start having very typical songs that we all know together. So we're, we're working on that this year. So if that's what you're wondering, how things are going, that's why you'll see the gray mark was actually two different songs in the answers. <laughs> but thankfully, Lori and I are hard at work with the booklet, which will be out very soon. And you'll be able to see the hymns and the contemporary songs together in there. So we won't only be having inserts in the long run. Okay, so I just wanted to explain some of that, why we're doing that, so that we, we have very regular and familiar songs to our church that we will that we'll be able to sing very well together, very joyfully. Um, so, now I'm, I, I lost my train of thought there for a second. But, okay, so we are having our prayer time, and um, would anyone like to share some praises? This morning. Thankful that my granddaughter made it through her surgery successfully. Oh, fantastic. I am just thankful for this place to come, these people to be with, <coughs> after a week of chaos, which is every week for me. Coming here and having this morning to spend with everybody, I am so thankful for that. The beauty of crowds through the woods with not from the trees. It's very pretty out there. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyone looking for 
forward to the guy. Is it the guy's in? Let's open it. Here, here that's very historical. Hey, what? No, no, no. No, guy's in. Oh, the uh, outdoorsman. Oh, the outdoorsman. I'm like the guy who's been open. I'm, I'm so down the street yeah, it's an outdoorsman. Yeah. But yes, the headwaters too. Headwaters. I don't know if anyone saw the sign that said "New Menu, New Owner, New Attitude." I that 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 really kind of annoyed me. <laughs> we'll see. So we were there last night. So. Anyway, does anyone have any prayer requests? Prayer for, a prayer for Terry Hoffman and Terry Beloit. Sue Patterson. Nancy Erickson. Matthew and Rachel. <coughs> Nancy Cassine. Sue Patterson. Dean Zastro. Bob Siegel and Nancy Bart. For those suffering from the recent shootings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 for our families and church members in Ukraine and in Russia. for our pastors and teachers and missionaries around the world for their help and their peace. surroundings, the blessings that have been given to us, and the relationships in our lives that bring us love and fulfillment. And I thank you for your presence and, and, and gifts bestowed upon us. I thank you for the enjoyment of this to come um, as a community this Sunday morning or on a, on a Wednesday or whichever day that we are together to, to celebrate what binds us together, which is in your name, Jesus. We do pray for those in need. We pray for those in need of comfort and love and someone's presence to grieve. For those that have lost loved ones recently, whether it's by war or by or by difficult circumstances with the shootings, uh, we pray for, for those church members to to follow your spirit, to love on them well, to offer what gifts they can, uh, and be a light for, uh, for them in dark places. We pray for those that are dealing with, with cancer and with sickness, and with COVID, with, with surgeries. We pray for them for comfort, pray for uh, sustainment, we pray strengthening upon their bodies, we pray for healing upon their bodies. Uh, we pray for all those that are involved in those, the doctors and the hospitals, pray you'll guide their hands as well. And we pray, Father, for those in difficult circumstances as well. We pray for their relationships. We pray for we pray for your comfort to be upon them and their mental and emotional needs as well. We pray for this world. And we thank you that you are the light that comes to save Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer with me, our Father. Our Lord, in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For your is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Sometimes I have to remember when I'm doing this 
that this is actually worship. I am having so much fun <laughs> when I when I play this that I have to remember, oh yeah, I'm giving this to God too. So I hope you have fun with me. I, I keep doing the same ones over and over just because I love them so much. This is uh, the old, old story. I think it's number 527 if you want to follow the words because I'm not singing. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> there might be a little but, problem with the order of worship today. But we are entering our time of worship where we will give back. <clears throat> so I'll invite the ushers forward for our time of offering. <laughs> blessings bestowed on us. We thank you for your love for us that you see our every need. We pray blessings over what was given back. May it be a blessing to others and the communities around us. In Jesus' name, amen. reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 9 verses 1 through 4. Nevertheless, the time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. The land of Zebulun and Naphtali will be humble, but there will be a time in the future when Galilee of the Gentiles, which lies along the road that runs between the Jordan and the sea, will be filled with glory. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge the nation of Israel, and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you, as people rejoice at the harvest, and like warriors dividing the plunder. For you will break the yoke of their slavery, and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod, just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. Our second reading... This is from 1 Corinthians, verses 10, 1 Corinthians 1, 10 through 18. I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, to live in harmony with each other. Let there be no divisions in the church, rather be of one mind, united in thought and purpose. For some members of Chloe's household have told me about your quarrels, my dear brothers and sisters. Some of you are saying, I am a follower of Paul. Others are saying, I follow Apollos, or I follow Peter, or I follow only Christ. Has Christ been divided into factions? Was I, Paul, crucified for you? Were any of you baptized in the name of Paul? Of course not. I thank God that I did not baptize any of you except Cyprus and Gaius. For now no one can say that they were baptized in my name. Oh yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus, but I don't remember baptizing anyone else. For Christ didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the good news, and not with clever speech, for fear that the cross of Christ would lose its power. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are headed for destruction, but we who are being saved know it is the very power of God. Please stand. Oh, 
chapter 4, verses 12 through 23. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he left Judea and returned to Galilee. He went first to Nazareth, then left there and moved to Capernaum, beside the Sea of Galilee, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali. This fulfilled what God said through the prophet Isaiah. In the land of Zebulun and of Naphtali, beside the sea beyond the Jordan River, in Galilee, where so many Gentiles live, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and those who lived in the land where death cast its shadow, a light has shined. From then on, Jesus began to preach, Repent for your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. One day, as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter and Andrew, throwing an egg into the water, for they were fishing for a living. Jesus called out to them, Come follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. <clears throat> a little further up the shore, he saw two other brothers, James and John, sitting in a boat with their father Zebedee, repairing their nets. And he called them to come, too. They immediately followed him, leaving the boat and their father behind. Jesus traveled throughout the region of, of Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. This ends the reading. I want to share a quick story because uh, my wife's dream is to play the accordion. <laughs> so, our first interaction with the accordion. In 2006, my wife and I flew over to Southern Africa for the I guess it was the first time. No, the second time. And we ended up in this small country. It's called the Mountain Kingdom of Lesotho. And we uh, get in a taxi. And the music is blaring in the taxi. And the music that is blaring is accordion music. I mean, I'm in. Really, really energetic. And... I had never heard the accordion before. Um, so just to, again, and, and, and to, to Bill, where's Bill? Where's Bill Spear. Uh, there you go. He, he asked me this morning. So so he asked me if I own any long sleeve shirts. And, and I said, you know, you know the Floridian in me still comes out. I, I, in, 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 in whatever season in Florida, it was short sleeve and shorts. And on church, you wear nice shorts and short sleeves and a nice short sleeve shirt. So right, Peggy? Right? Yeah. 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 You might happen to have a hoodie for January when it's really cold. So, um, but anyway, I, so in Florida we don't get accordions. Okay, so, um, so anyway, it was uh, amazing to go into the city center, and it was a lot of um, a lot of pastors who actually had an accordion because it, in their churches you don't have the space or or the money for a full piano, but you can have an accordion. And this one, uh, he called himself kind of an evangelist. He, he did have a job, but he would go into prisons and he would take his accordion. And he was actually a, a, a fairly big Masutu man, not, not quite as tall as me, but probably at least six feet tall, which in Africa, that's, that's tall. So, so he's a, a very strong, booming voice, you know, and he's delivering his message about Jesus, and he's trying to invite people to really think through, you know, what a relationship with God looks like. And then he says, now we're going to worship. And he yanks up his accordion, and man, he just becomes the most animated man I ever saw in my life. I mean, it was, I mean, it was back and forth, you know. And, and the great part was, was, uh, I mean, the people got into it as well, and carried him along. And then in the mountains, I uh, discovered another instrument. So uh, a turpentine, you know, the old turpentine containers are made of metal, right? They're big. And the shepherds would take them from the trash and they cut out a hole, a square hole, and then they would 
bang a piece of wood on the back and then add strings to it. What usually uh, sometimes like a like they unwind the barbed wire or they would find other loose string and they would tune them. Obviously not the same as a guitar. And man, they could really go to town on on on. I, I, it was my first experience with what I would call an African lyre, if you know what a lyre is. Mm-hmm. Thousands of years ago, when when David is playing his songs, he's using basically what it, what we now know as kind of a guitar, <laughs> and and um, and that's what they played in the mountains. And then, in uh, I had a chance ten years ago. I, I promise these stories are going somewhere. So all along. <laughs> I have a chance to go to what was called the breadbasket of the old Soviet Union. Mm. Uh, and the curtain, of course, came down in the early 90s. And uh, this country is called Moldova. Moldova mm. is a small country uh, just next to Romania and beautiful. I mean, the, the fruit that grew there, the fruit trees, they were, they were everywhere, particularly cherries and, and raspberries, I remember because I ate so much that it almost made me sick. Um, but, but a beautiful place. And, and Pastor, uh, I met there. His name was Vitaly, of course, of all things. Uh, a very common name. Uh, he had lived under communist time. Uh, he was, uh, I'm trying to think at the time, he was probably in his mid-40s or so when I had met him 10 years ago. And and of course, he remembers the before and after. And the after was, of course, his ability to now go out and and talk about uh, his belief in Jesus uh, a lot more easily. And what did he use? An accordion. The accordion. <laughs> and we went into the prison and we went on the streets. And man, he loved his accordion. And, and it was just a, a beautiful time to listen to him sing in Russian and sing his songs. And of course, I had brought my guitar as well. And sometimes we, we both play. Well, not at the same time, because I did not know his, his songs and he didn't know mine. But, um, but it was just a joyous event. So where am I going with this? Uh, I titled this message, Where Are You Living? And what I really meant, or what are you living in? And what I meant by this is, what space are you living in? What kind of, you might call it house, I'm referencing Psalm 27 now, when I say, one thing I desire, uh, one thing I seek the most is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And I, I was really reflecting on Psalm 27 and, and realizing that all the different places in the world that I've been have different expressions different uh, songs being sung, different languages, different ways people dress, um, different ways that people are are really connecting with God as communities. <coughs> and so where am I going with this? I want to have I want to give you a compare and, and contrast uh, in my opinion of what it means to to live in God's house versus the alternative. Uh, and and what do we want to talk uh, about the effects of these two? Meaning where you live matters what you're experiencing in life. Now, when I first got there in, in Southern Africa and I heard the accordion, it was a shock. I, I mean, it was literally, what, what is the sound? And of course, the, the words didn't help. They were actually singing in English too, and the words didn't quite make sense to me. Um, but I, I could have experienced from a this is a terrible sound, or I could have understood and asked more questions and, and try and, and find out what the expression the, the, uh, from their culture is about, especially when you're hearing fundamentally different cultural experiences. But all of them put together, meaning in God's house, in my opinion, are many, many expressions of of what we will experience as worship. I fully expect to one day track down David and hear some of those songs, and I guarantee you it will not sound like what I think. (laughs) And I'll get out my guitar, and maybe we'll compare notes. I'm sure it'll be a lot better than I am. 
Um, but, but the point is, is I am appreciating and understanding and, and really valuing his worship to the Lord. And I have the opportunity and the invitation to do the same. And so, what do I want to, to, to give you as these points? Where do we live? Where do we, where do we live? The first one is, of course, in, in Psalm 27. It is in God's house. And, and where do we, find, what do we find when we're living in God's house? I think that we find relief. I think if you truly want to experience the peace that God talks about, and you want to experience the relief of, of living in a place that, that God has created, why do we say relief? Because relief, it, it, it is expressing something that we are letting go of. So what are we letting go of? We are letting go of the typical <coughs> ways or the black and white, this is the right way and this is the wrong way of worship. We do not know and we cannot know truly what someone's heart is, is founded in. Meaning, even when I am up here playing the guitar, you don't truly know if I'm worshiping or if I'm just singing a song. And the same goes for any instrument I am playing. Now, we are very incarnate people. Do you know what incarnate means? Incarnate is just meaning in the flesh. So when they say Jesus incarnate, they mean Jesus came and he was in the, in, in the flesh. But when I say incarnate, there are goods and bads to that. The first one being that we identify with the and, and created in the image of God. The bad side of that is we are very prone to judge things based off of our senses. We are, we are basing our judgments off of what we see and what we hear. And so if I look at, at Lorraine and I look at the accordion, I can say, that sounds terrible. Like, she is not really worshiping. I don't get to make that judgment call anymore. I, I find relief when I'm able to let go and say, I'm going to trust that God is going to work in her life. And if I'm not sure, and if I suspect that he's not, well, then I'm going to pray more of his presence upon her. But it doesn't mean that I get to judge based off of the instrument, based off of what she looks like, or how she sounds. So, that is what relief is. Relief is being able to say, we come in from so many different backgrounds. And what does it mean to, to value someone based off of, of them, them being made in God's image, based off of them having the, the ability and the invitation to give of themselves in worship. And that's why I call it relief. The second one is we live in the light and not in the darkness. And now I'm referencing Isaiah. Those, nevertheless, the time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. Right? The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. I really liken this to, to the, literally the light that shines upon us, the warmth. When I said, I just, I didn't put the visor down when I was driving the other day, so I could just feel the warmth of the sun in my face. And even, I think, Dorinda at the grocery store told me, isn't it amazing what it feels like when the sun comes out? And everybody's thinking, I need to soak up as much as possible. Uh, but what does this give us? This gives us the sense of warmth and peace. I even put shelter on there. Shelter meaning a shelter from the darkness itself. We have peace knowing that the light is shining on us. Knowing that it is actually something that we are experiencing in real time. Meaning God didn't turn his light this way like a flashlight. His, his light is turned toward us as a community and as an individual and it's inviting me in to soak up that, that warmth of his presence and his love. The second one is that, and now I'm, I'm referencing 1 Corinthians. So if you're, if you're unsure where the scriptures are coming in, this is why I put the readings right before the message, because I'm not going to read the scriptures again, since we had a great reader today. Thank you, Steve. But 1 Corinthians, we live under one name. 
we live under the name of Jesus Christ. And that gives us a, a, a lot of freedom, even though for millennia, it seems like it has seemed like it has separated us in terms of Paul has baptized me or Apollo has baptized me. But what does bind us together is ultimately the life and the resurrection, or life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And what does this give us? I think this gives us the ability to actually freely, freely love ourselves as God loves us. We have scriptures like, what is man that God would think of us? And yet, Jesus did choose to come, and he is the one that chose to say, you are worthy of me loving you. I want to love you, and I am coming to die for you so that you can be free. So what does this give us? It gives us the ability to say, you know what? I don't have to hate myself. I don't have to, to dig myself a grave. That in fact that, that Jesus loves me, I can I can simply agree with him. And that gives me a, a, a great sense of freedom. Because it is one of the one of the most primal questions that we have for ourselves. Does does somebody love me? Am I loved? Am I worthy? And thankfully the one who made it all, the one who rules all, has answered that question time and time again, not just with words, but with his action and of course ultimately with his life. And the fourth thing that I put down is we live in the kingdom. And what is this kingdom? The kingdom is, is God, of course, and his reign of, of love and mercy and justice. But it gives us the ability to now love others. So God has loved us so much because of his grace that he now extends an invitation to us to live in a kingdom where we can extend grace to others. So if you'll see the process where it's first, I find just the relief, the, the ability to surrender to God's presence as when we live in God's house. We find the peace and warmth and shelter and love that we've always craved for ourselves, which gives us the ability to agree with Christ because he didn't just say it, he came and did it. So we can now love ourselves. And ultimately, we now have the ability to love others. So hopefully you can see the process of, first, the, the coming to Jesus, the healing of Jesus, the ability to be loved, and now the freedom to turn outward as well. So what is the alternative? Because I do want to talk about the alternative. And hopefully, you will see this as an invitation, not as a challenge or as a, a command even of something that I'm telling us uh, we're all doing wrong, but as an invitation to live in, in the freedom and the love that I've just talked about. The alternative is that first we live in our own house. We live in our own house of, of pride and individualism, thinking that we can make it on our own or we can survive on our own or we can accomplish things simply on our own and feel the same kind of relief and peace that we are striving to feel when we're trying to do it on our own. The second one is that instead of the light, we are living in the darkness of our own thoughts or our own negativity, or living in the negativity that others have spoken out over our lives. Uh, we have chosen to feel like the darkness is stronger than the light, and that we are in fact living under the curse instead of the new covenant. The third, instead of feeling like God has forgiven us, instead of knowing that we all live under the name of Christ, we continue to live in judgment and shame. We have pronounced ourselves guilty, we have judged ourselves wanting, and we have sentenced ourselves to a life of maybe pain and shame and utter humiliation. That's an alternative. And the fourth, just as instead of an invitation to live in the kingdom, to love others and offer others grace, we can live in the way of the world. And what is the way of the world? The way of the world, as we have seen and what feels like lately, though it's been around since the beginning, we learn judgment from 
from the way of the world. We learn that it's man versus man, and I say mankind, woman versus man, woman versus woman. We learn this way from the world, that it is me against you. It is our church against your church. It is your system versus my system, and you can pick a thousand other choices and say against, against, against. This is the alternative that the world wants to teach us, and in fact lives by. The irony of the some of the, the words that have been in fad lately, which is the word acceptance, which I find an amazing word and a very loving word, is that it's used, but only used when you are all thinking the same thing and, and, and acknowledging the same right way of doing things. Meaning, apparently, we should all look the same and we should all be doing the same and valuing the same things. Because I believe the guitar is really the best instrument and the only instrument. <laughs> and from here on out, we will only have the guitar. <laughs> Not just any guitar, but only the acoustic guitar that's been around for thousands of years. And for those of you that don't like it, well, I accuse you of not accepting me. <laughs> now, I'm not saying this as, as only a joke, but as a, a way to show you that even us, we are prone to do it ourselves. We are prone to know that, you know what, this is the way I've always experienced it. But in fact, we don't know each other's story. We don't know each other's background. You, of course, wouldn't look at me and know that I spent a quarter of my life in a different country that had very different ways of operating in church. I told someone once, maybe it was Wendy or someone, the longest church service I was ever a part of was seven hours. So if you are complaining about an hour-long service, <laughs> Put on your seatbelts. <laughs> Excellent. I am trying to show you the different ways to show you that that ultimately we do not know. We can we can look at things and try and judge things based off of our background, but the truth is is we don't know. And the horrible thing is is that that is exactly what Jesus experienced. He didn't look like the Pharisees. He didn't look tall. Actually, he didn't look like he was a, a model. He didn't have the perfect chiseled face. He didn't have a picture of him posted on all the bulletin boards saying, Come out and see me. I'll heal you. He didn't look like what they wanted. He didn't act like what they wanted. And they judged him for it. And they killed him for it. And this is what the world teaches us. That is the alternative that we are experiencing. And the interesting thing is, is that deep down inside, we really do long for the relief to not live in that system anymore. We just don't know how sometimes. The truth is, is that we really do want the warmth of the light and say, God, I'm, I, I'm just so anxious. And God might just say, you know what, maybe it's time to just let go. The judgment that you have placed on so many different people is killing you. And I just ask you to follow me. I remember the story when, when Peter is talking to Jesus, and, and Jesus was basically kind of giving a bit of a foretelling of what John's life would be like. And Peter says, well, what, what about me? <laughs> and, and Jesus said, basically is like, that's not your story. I have you in a different story. And if we spent more of our energy and more of our time, more of our heart and thoughts on what it means to truly stay in step with the Holy Spirit for ourselves, not to say that it's an individual faith either, but as a community, I think that we would find those things that we truly aren't sure if it's true for us when it says peace that passes understanding, when it says love beyond measure, how far and how wide and how deep. I think if we let go of trying to hold other people accountable and just say, am I following you? I think we will find the answers that we are looking for. So I encourage you and invite you, the same as Jesus said to, did, to experience this kind of life in Christ. 
I know that there's still wrong things that are happening, things that we disagree with. But you know what? Thankfully, Jesus came and said, you know what, you don't have to play God anymore. I invite you to not worry about that. And you can just be a follower of mine. Because I've got that taken care of. I am the one that sees all. I am the one that knows all. I am the one that knows what justice and mercy. I know what, what love means. And so I just ask you to let me be God. And you to just be my child. So let's pray. God, I thank you. I thank you that you invite us to be children. <laughs> I, I, I thank you that you invite us to experience you, experience the kingdom, experience your love as a child would. I thank you that that we can see that kind of, of love and excitement and energy in children around us. And I thank you that it is a reminder to us over and over again to let you be our Father, to let you be God, to let you be the ruler. Now, we don't have to be the judge anymore. We don't have to be the jury. We don't have to be the ruler that you invite us to surrender and let go so that we can find all of those things that you are telling us is at hand. Not just when we go to heaven and find the relief that everything is, is back in order and newly made, but in fact we can experience now if we're willing to, to follow you, if we're willing to be open-handed with you, if we're willing to to follow the ways that you have, have shown us as the one that is the most life-giving, life-receiving, life-altering, life-being, all things in life that, that you want to give us because, because we are your children and you care about all of us just like we have cared about our children. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you show us what that life could look like today, what it could look like this week. That when the world wants us to offer up hate and negativity and, and jump on the, the sides of whichever camp it invites us to be on, that we can say, you know what, I'll just stand with God on this one. And I'll just offer love and grace and keep offering it until you might see that there's a different way. That is not the way of the world, but a heavenly way that offers life to every single person who might see it and want it truly. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And let's close with 10593. <laughs> Thank you.
The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. Amen. 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 I like that one. <laughs>